Well, hello. Today, we're fortunate to have the lovely Deborah Taveras with us. And most of uh, you probably know who she is. She knows a lot. She has the website uh, stopthecrime.net. Um, and uh, she fights tyranny relentlessly. Um, Deborah? Well, thank you for that nice introduction, Dr. Ed. I want to start out by holding this up and having everyone take a read of this because this is absolutely our reality. And this is also on stopthecrime.net as well so that you can take a look at it there. It says, and this is by former uh, CIA Director William Casey in 1981, it says, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American people believe is false. And that's where we've arrived. We're virtually in a virtual reality. When you look at page 12 and 13 of the NASA war document, and they talk about the technological ages of humankind, you go through the ages of evolution and now a forced created evolution, a virtual reality of robotization, of, of uh, the truth being the lies and the lies being the truth. We're going to talk about many things, but I want to uh, just uh, let everyone know that's listening. Uh, what goes forward from here is going to rely upon your engagement. We can no longer consent by lack of education and trusting in a government system that is predatory and is set to consume everything that is good and decent. We are out of control. We do not have a representative government. People need to understand. You can go to stopthecrime.net. Everything on that website is a free download. I would urge everybody to read The Great American Adventure, Secrets of America by retired Judge Dale and the companion book, The Matrix and the U.S. Constitution as soon as possible. Then I would urge everybody to also read Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. It's a 44-page document. It is a collection of some of the most significant uh, goals of the New World Order. It includes the U.S. Air Force, it includes uh, Harvard University, the international bankers, and the Rockefeller uh, Institute. Again, that is silent weapons for quiet wars. So there are many, many documents on the website of stopthecrime.net. Uh, under the source document link, we have documents that are military documents showing the, uh, showing the purpose of weaponized weather warfare and also weaponized frequencies to subdue the enemy. It's important to understand we are the enemy. In 1933, when America's gold was stolen and we were just coming out of a concocted war called the Great Depression, where our grandparents struggled to survive that intentional war upon the American people, it's important to understand that that was all intentional. It's also important to know that our history has been subverted and has been recreated and has been uh, reinvented. We're living in a false reality. And what occurred in 1933, and of course before that as well, but I'm going to just start there because you can go to stopthecrime.net to the USA uh, link uh, USA Inc. link and download what you're going to hear me talk about right now. Everything that I am talking about has resource backup documents and it's imperative. Uh, we're in a battlefield, we're the enemy, and we must engage. And this is a peaceful engagement. We're not advocating uh, guns because uh, with the levels of technology that they have available now, uh, our guns are mere little... Um, uh, squirt guns, essentially. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, some of the weapons that we talk about in the NASA war plan are chemical and biologicals. 
they have been using chemicals and biologicals. They've been conscripting insects to kill uh, the population. This is a fingerprintless, this is a plausible deniability assault upon the global population. Now, getting back to 1933, what's important to understand is that from that time forward, we have been in an annual uh, extended perpetual state of national emergency here in the United States. Uh, all of the um, government uh, aspects go through the executive branch via executive order. I know many of you scratch your heads and you keep saying, how can the current president, it doesn't matter uh, what political basis that president is, whether it is Democrat or Republican, how can they keep creating executive orders? Well, as long as we remain in a permanent state of national emergency, the Constitution has been abolished and everything goes directly through the executive branch via executive orders. Now, you can confirm this by looking at Senate Report 93549, again, under the USAE Inc. link on StopTheCrime.net. Now, uh, I've recently gone to a number of meetings here in Sonoma County. We're about an hour north of the Golden Gate Bridge. We are under heavy assault with climate action plans. These are global plans. Uh, they are a global template. Uh, and I would urge everyone to find this information on the Climate Action Plan link of StopTheCrime.net. At this point, I want to say to any of you who cannot download these documents for free off of our websites, you can contact a printing company that we've made arrangements with. For just the cost of printing and postage, you can get any one of these documents that you hear me talk about. The phone number to contact is area code 707-586-9558. Once again, area code 707-586-9558. Now this is an SOS YouTube recording. We're in an emergency, predatory, vicious takedown by a corporate system that does not acknowledge living, living beings living animals, living anything. It is predatory. Corporations are a fiction. They are uh, a dead legal fiction. And we are being absolutely run over by corporate statutes posing as laws and rules that we have been abiding by because they've been playing checkers and we've been playing chess. We were not educated to understand the corporate reality. And when you look at the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document, you will see they've told us that the bookkeeper can be king as long as the bookkeeper can keep the methodology of the bookkeeping a secret from the population. So I would recommend you read Silent Weapons Quiet Wars, understand, and understand that the multiple methods in which they are destroying the human family, this is global, is a massive assault, full on bore now. Now, what do I mean by full on bore now? Of course, it's been incremental for many, many decades, uh, but we know that the Star Wars system is set up for full surveillance. We know that the smart meter system is set up not only for surveillance and incarceration and monitoring and tracking, but dicing and slicing our DNA and causing illnesses and damage to our biological structures. Uh, at the top of StopTheCrime.net on the scroll, I urge you to print off the symptoms list for Wi-Fi and for smart meter frequency uh, assaults and what the um, autism, ADHD, uh, children's designers diseases, these are all environmentally created uh, to uh, benefit the a profit bottom line of Big Pharma and the other corporations. Now, what do we have that we're being faced with right now in each of our communities? It's called the requirement to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we know that, of course, this is scientific and political fraud. There are over 31,000 American scientists and thousands of scientists worldwide that are saying we could reduce our greenhouse gas emissions 100 percent 
and it would not alter the weather. What are these plans really all about? These plans are a script, as if you will, for weaponized weather warfare and economic weaponization of the entire global structure. They tell us that if we do not reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, we're going to have increased sea level rising, we're going to have storms, fires, assaults from all types of horrific weather events. Now they control the weather. Go to ToxicSky.org, take a look at the NASA documents there, NASA's involved, as well as the military and many other corporate global agencies worldwide. So for those of you that have not yet uh, acknowledged or understand the weaponization of the weather and the extent in which they are controlling the weather, you need to understand this is a worldwide, deliberate, large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate. And they have this capability, and they're doing it daily. Now, over our skies here, an hour north of the Golden Gate Bridge in Sonoma County, we see uh, the uh, weather being amplified every day. We seem to be a staging area for uh, the storms that are being sent across the United States and literally wiping people out of towns, uh, obliterating small rural towns, uh, a disastrous targeting for political and for land grab and for chaos. The more chaos that be can be created, the more fear that can be created, we will accept the illusion that we must all surrender to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Again, no amount of greenhouse gas emissions uh, reduction will change the weather events. They tell us if we do not reduce the greenhouse gas emissions along with these amazing intentional weaponized weather events that they're saying are natural, uh, they tell us too that we're going to suffer from all kinds of health problems, health-related problems. On page 9 of the San Diego Climate Action Plan, which you can see on StopTheCrime.net under the Climate Action Plan link, you will see a chart, again, with the uh, weather events that are caused by our impact on the globe, uh, and then the health uh, events that will be caused as a result of the weaponized weather events. They tell us that we will have increased allergies. We will have uh, uh, depression. They talk about mental illness. They talk about airborne illnesses, waterborne illnesses, um, and again, uh, mil uh, mental illnesses. This is discussed in these climate action plans. They are creating a mental illness. In fact, I can recommend that you go to YouTube and you watch the YouTube um, uh, psychi psychology, psychiatrics is a big business. I, I have that posted on the website so that uh, you can look at that under the Climate Action Plan link. I don't know that I got the name of the YouTube correct, but um, I have it posted at the top of StopTheCrime.net, the Climate Action Plan link. Understand, this is all being staged. We are literally we are literally lab rats in a laboratory. All the human population. We're being annihilated. We're being disappeared. They're taking homeless people off the streets. Uh, they're uh, misinforming us with the census. We are not um, increasing in population. They are vanishing and disappearing, many of us. The um, indigents and the other uh, people in um, less... Um, or in impoverished areas are disappearing. The uh, children and the people that are on the roads hitchhiking, they're disappearing. They're disappearing. Hundreds of thousands of children in the United States and globally are disappearing, not only for human sex trafficking and um, uh, experimentation, uh, but they're also harvesting organs. That's enormous big business. Uh, there are people being taken into hospitals and having their organs harvested. But I, I want to stay on the idea what you can put your fingers on in your town right now. And I did a recent YouTube video, 
It was an emergency town hall meeting. You can go to YouTube and type in who's running America. Or you can go to the homepage of StopTheCrime.net and listen to that methodical presentation that we gave on why your cities are incorporated. They're doing business. They're all listed on Dunn and Bradstreet. They do not serve you. You do not have public servants. You have public officials that are, are agents and employees of a corporate structure that is consuming us. Now, we must understand uh, the, the enormity of what we face, and we must engage with not consenting on all levels that we can. This is a paper non-consent that we are advocating. What we have occurring now in our cities is the adoption of these uh, climate action plans or energy action plans, or as they're also referred to, um, greenhouse gas emissions reduction requirements. So you can type this into your search engine with your town. Uh, most likely, if your town has not yet adopted this uh, requirement, they will. Uh, certainly, your states have. Uh, all the governors have taken the money and have initiated these plans. Uh, we have posted some of these um, uh, grants that they've taken to further the uh, plan adoptions in our cities. You need to understand Corporations run on paper. They run on grants. They run on contracts. We need to be asking for the grants. We need to be asking for the contracts. We have not because we have not understood the system. We're going into meetings constantly. The meetings are run uh, what they call the Delphi technique. The Delphi technique was invented by the Rand Corporation in the 60s. It is a corporate meeting style. It is global. In fact, engineers and scientists of all levels will come out of these meetings real. It's all being uh, driven on predetermined outcomes to benefit the corporate structure. Again, take a look at uh, the matrix, the United uh, States Constitution. Again, a free download on StopTheCrime.net under the USAE link and you will understand nothing is real. Our state and federal governments are not real. We have been betrayed, we have been misled, and we have been in, enslaved by lack of knowledge. The educational system is clearly an indoctrination system. I know for many of you that are looking at this YouTube, you're well aware of the Common Core curriculum. It's an international or global curriculum. It's certainly sweeping into all the schools in the United States. Those that are opposing it are going to school boards, not realizing the school boards are incorporated. The school boards have taken the money. These programs are being advanced rapidly, despite the pushback against the reduced math and science curriculums in, um, in the uh, Common Core curriculum. It's, uh, again, a further dumbing down. We were all dumbed down. We have not known our history. Um, I'm certain many of you really do believe that Columbus discovered America. Well, of course, that is not real. Uh, and there are many things that we have been deceived. Um, I would refer you uh, to the NASA war document to understand again on page 12 and 13. We're now in a phase of virtual reality where humans are being replaced by machinery. Uh, this is all part of the transhumanism agenda that we'll get into in a moment. But we are under mass mind control already. And uh, why, why is that? Well, uh, we have been uh, literally uh, hit with so many levels of frequencies and, and backdoor Trojan horses in our appliances and in our television sets, subliminal messaging in print material for decades. Uh, again, I refer you to the uh, scroll at the top of StopTheCrime.net. We have a full page flyer. We talk about what happened in the 90s with the takeover of all of the print material, uh, more of the subliminal messaging, and how this has literally caused global mind control. Uh, in the silent weapons document, we are told they want to control the bankers and those uh, rich men of the earth that they're referred to in the Iron Mountain report 
They want to control all energy on the face of the planet. We are energy. They want to control our minds. And you will see that we have an Aquarius operations briefing on the homepage of StopTheCrime.net. The Aquarius Operations was a secret society and is a secret society that was tasked with creating mind control. It's a 50-page document. The last page of that document shows cell phone towers. So when you go on to antennasearch.com, antennasearch.com, and you type in your address, you can find not only a radius map, generally a four-mile radius map, of the cell phone towers, a separate map for the cell phone towers, and a separate radius map for the antennas. And you can type in any address you'd like, your home, your business, your schools, what have you. You will see that these uh, cell phone towers have been systematically deployed globally for the mind control apparatus and the uh, enslavement and incarceration of the global population with frequencies. We do, we do not see them, we cannot touch them, but they are interfacing with the frequencies because we're frequencies. We're frequencies and matter. And these frequencies are overriding our, our computers in our brains. This is what quantum computing and artificial intelligence is all about. We have a link on Stop the Crime called No More Humans. I would encourage everyone to spend some time there. Uh, go to 20, the year 2045.com, that's 2045.com, understand the intentions of the elimination and replacement of the human population as we have known it now. And along the way, we have met many, many, uh, many, many people that have been subjected to direct targeting with electromagnetic frequencies by the corporate agencies uh, imposing themselves as governments. We do not have representation at all. We are completely being consumed by a corporate structure and we must not consent. I'm talking about um, the year 2045.com. I would recommend that everyone go to StopTheCrime.net, uh, click on the No More Human link. Understand the intended created um, evolution of mankind that those with the money and the methodologies are attempting to do. Now we must learn how our reality is really coming to pass under the plans that they have for us. They've told us in the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document that they would leech off of us until such time they were able to separate from us when they had enough power and then they would devour us. And I want to uh, talk about an FBI director quote from um, J. Edgar Hoover. This quote is on stopthecrime.net and I would urge you to pass it around, send it out on YouTube, and get this out to everyone you know. Now I'm going to read it to you. This is FBI director's warning. The individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. The American mind simply has not come to the realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. It rejects even the assumption that human creatures could espouse a philosophy which must ultimately destroy destroy all that is good and decent. And again, this is former FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover. This is in 1956. So it's important to understand the levels of technologies that have been waged against us and that have built up to the point where we're a police state now. Another extremely important document, a free download on StopTheCrime.net uh, would be the report from Iron Mountain. I would recommend you download it and you read it. This will talk about the intentions of continuing the wars globally, which is why we have um, unconstitutional wars, as people call it. Well, we don't have a constitution. It's important to understand that. 
That's why I've recommended you read The Great American Adventure, Secrets of America, but also read The Iron Mountain Report, because Kennedy warned us only 10 days before he was assassinated that there was a monolithic, ruthless conspiracy set to conscript every aspect of our lives, politically, scientifically, military, civil, every aspect of our lives that has come to pass. Now it's up to us to become educated, it's up to us to understand so that we can create as safe a communities as we're able to in this time of massive, massive betrayal. So what do you do? Well, you must not consent. And you can again go to StopTheCrime.net. We have examples of forms that we've created. Go to the Climate Action Plan link, print off the uh, question of enforcement in your city, knocking on your door, wanting to assess whether your home is sustainable or not. They're going to measure whether you have air intrusion coming in through your windows, whether you need weather stripping under your doors, you may need added insulation in your roofs or your walls or your floors. You also uh, will be required to replace all of your inefficient appliances to all appliances that are uh, RFID chipped Energy Star electric appliances. Now, why did I say electric? Because Energy Star does not manufacture gas appliances. They are limiting our ability to access resources. The fewer options that they give us, the more control that they have. So in order to prevent the assessment of your home, which is going to be put on a massive data bank, your, your house is going to be assessed on a scorecard from one to 10, one being inefficient and 10 being efficient. And you will be required to upgrade your homes to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions when your homes are inefficient. Now they will have loans for you. Here in Sonoma County, you can take out a loan and you can collateralize that against your home to purchase all of the um, efficient appliances and to create the efficiency levels within your home. Very important to understand, these are in the plans, these are in the climate action plans. These are global. These have hit the United States. They're in every single town, everywhere. They're increasing revenue. They're making it more and more difficult for people to own single family homes. Why? Because they're stealing the land. Uh, I would urge all of you to go onto YouTube and watch a video entitled Torn From the Land. That's Torn From the Land by Lindsay Williams. And you will understand how the bakers influenced the, the land grabs in the 40s and 30s and 50s from the U.S. farms and farmers and ranchers. This is happening now. We recently went to the Bundy Ranch. We know that Clark County, where the Bundy Ranch is located, has a climate action plan. Uh, when you uh, have an approved climate action plan, which we all do basically now, if you are outside of your city growth boundary, in other words, you can go to your building department and you can get a, a, a layout of what the urban growth boundary looks like, where the boundaries are. You can determine whether you are in that urban growth boundary within the city limits, so to speak, or outside of the city limits. If you are outside of the city limits, you are considered sprawl and unsustainable. And those are the properties that are under massive assault now. Here in Northern California and in other states that we've traveled in as well, they're not doing any road repair in rural areas. Why? Because we're not going to need to access those roads to properties that are going to be unavailable to us to access. This is the plan. This is being stealthily done. All our road gas tax money has been stolen. And now they're saying that they want to increase revenue again so that they can continue to improve our roadway. That's all mis misinformation. They're lying. We're under a corporate structure. This is revenue-based. They're stealing from us, and they're stealing our minds. So I would urge you to uh, first understand that the weaponized weather events have been happening for a very long time. 
understand that we're under a massive economic warfare attack as well through these plans and also understand there are going to be many people in your community talking about things that are unfamiliar to you such as hearing voice to skull in their heads voices in their heads such as um, not being able to sleep well at night feeling like they're being burned and they are and feeling like there are physical assaults upon their bodies feeling as though they're being gang stalked because they're seeing people follow them this is a reality this is happening in every single city in every single country across the globe this is the new form of warfare in our cities now I, I appreciate that Dr. Ed introduced me originally uh, and I know that we would like to talk about mind control and the uh, degrees in which mind control is occurring in our neighborhoods and in our communities and globally to really everybody and what that means with artificial intelligence and the reality to literally have a global brain in other words to feed the global thoughts and emotions into a global brain because Dr. Ed when we went recently uh, to a um, program that Al Gore put on he introduced his new book called The Future and he talked about the global brain and how technologies were advancing faster than in any, any time in history and we were going to literally become a global brain well, uh, Deborah, you've uh, certainly given us an enormous amount of information and uh, well documented. And so I guess, you know, I would have to ask you at this point, when are you going to give us the bad news? Well, Dr. Ed, I guess um, it really does appear that there's quite a bit of bad news. It depends on how you look at it. What I have found, quite frankly, uh, is the more that you start to understand your reality and getting out of the fairy tale that you've been living in, the illusion, the more empowered people are feeling. And then you realize the level that you must engage and we must not consent. And we must start with the simplest things that we can do, and that is not consent with these home in-home energy audits. We must not consent to a variety of requirements and statutes that your cities are going to start to impose upon you. These are all statutory corporate rules and regulations. They do not apply to us. They told us over and over again in their documents that their success is based on our consenting. Mm -hmm. And we're consenting because we have been enslaved by lack of intentional lack of knowledge. This was all planned. We're sitting here today because we as human beings are on the precipice of annihilation. And unless we engage, unless we wake up, turn off the sports channels, start looking at reality, start having meetings within your communities, looking at some of the information that we talk about on StopTheCrime.net and other sites as well, and read some of this. In fact, the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document is up on YouTube being read to you so that people don't even have to read. But they literally, we found on the um, uh, U.S. Um, Department of Energy website, uh, and again, people can see this on StopTheCrime.net under the Energy Action Plan, where they talk about the real goal of energy use. They say it's not to use any energy at all. It's learning to live in a new reality, adjusting our behavior. This is the Hunger Games. This is really the Hunger Games. Well, um, do we want to talk about mind control at this point, or should we take a break? Well, um, I think that we should talk about mind control. Okay. They're not taking any breaks. So, um, will you let us talk us about mind control? Well, you know, I think <laughs> They said that we can. They, oh, we can. <laughs> yes, okay. okay, so you're having subliminal mm. messaging occurring right now. Well, Voice to skull. But, but yeah, let's, let's do, because I certainly know many people that are experienced. And as soon as they locate... All of us soon. Well, absolutely. Well, yeah, through yeah. the aerosol, uh, we, they will be um, dispersing um, aerosol uh, chipping into us through the nanotechnology. But at this moment, many people have been chipped, and they've been identified, and they've been tracked and monitored as a result of their chipping. 
Brave New World. Well, this, I have, I'm holding a book here uh, by uh, Robert Duncan, uh, Project a Soul Catcher, which talks about this technology of mind control or mind sway, maybe one, another way of putting it, because, you know, it's not exactly like they're uh, flying an airplane most of the time, but it's, I think people are just kind of pushed one way or another. And online, there's another uh, source by Robert Duncan, uh, which is uh, The Matrix uh, Deciphered. You can find that online. We actually have it posted uh, under the mind control link of stopthecrime.net. That's the, um, the Matrix Deciphered by Robert Duncan. People can access it and download it there as well. Now, you, uh, you had something you were going to uh, tell me about, about uh, mind control and... Uh, you said that Robert Duncan is under mind control? Well, he admits that in his book called The Matrix Deciphered, uh, that he also is apologizing to the world for being um, uh, one that was duped into creating technologies that have caused the abilities that are now being advanced through technologies. He's apologized. He has also said he's working on technologies to help reverse it. But we see it just increasing. I, I don't see it um, backing off at all. I, I'm being told that there are many people that are working to help reverse what we're living in right now. Um, but quite frankly, with the deployment of all of the technologies to the degree that they have them, what are your, what is your sense of our, of our future, Dr. Ed? Well, uh, we have to uh, take hold of it and make it what we want. Otherwise, it's not going to be anything we can tolerate. I think that this, the new facilities, that they, they, there's great talk of uh, collecting data, you know, of uh, all phone calls, any uh, little league score or, you know, shopping list. I think that the uh, facilities that they're building, like the Buffalo uh, in the, the, Utah. Oh, the, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the NSA. Uh, they're, they're, they say that they're, uh, you know, data collection. Right? They, uh, they uh, infer that, but they're really, uh, I think, mind control stations because well, this is uh, highly developed technology and um, has been with us uh, way longer than we think, probably uh, more than uh, close, to, uh, close to 60 years. Well, that's true. In fact, I was doing some research out of Pennsylvania, and I came across uh, the rebuilding of future cities. And I have that posted, again, on the Climate Action Plan link of StopTheCrime.net. They've since taken it down, but you can get it there. We, we captured it. What we found, Dr. Ed, is that all future cities are going to have large facilities for um, computers. And they've said that they need a, a, a very high, um, they need an ability to access um, electricity and water. And uh, what we see now is, of course, the creation of the idea of scarcity with us, where they're telling us, get off grid as best you can, although it's illegal to be off grid. People that are off grid are having their homes red tagged. Uh, we see that in the Antelope Valley. There was a woman in uh, Florida recently who uh, literally was told her house was being condemned because she did not want to uh, connect to um, any resources. Mm -hmm. But what we find is that the curious aspect of why do they want us off of the grid, the frequency, the network, the utility network, um, Certainly some have speculated that they want all of that frequency because it's all weaponized. They've got the dirty electricity. Right now we've discovered, too, that they've increased the height of the telephone poles, the utility poles. They're transitioning from the wood poles that we've all been familiar with to 90-foot steel poles. They say the reason that they're increasing the pole height, specifically around schools and neighborhoods, mm -hmm. is to distance the EMF electromagnetic frequencies from us. We know that that's not real. We know that they're not doing anything to serve us. In fact, Sam Milham recently said that heightening the poles will allow greater uh, dirty electricity uh, expansion. So what we have is we're being, um, we're being really cooked overhead 
with all the heavy metals in the chemtrailing uh, program, all the dirty frequencies now in our house wires, in the ground, and all of the cell phone towers and the cell the antennas, uh, all of the wireless that we have. In fact, Honeywell, uh, who manufactures uh, thermostats for homes, uh, is saying part of the reducing of your greenhouse gas emissions is to purchase new Honeywell thermostats. These have all Trojan horse backdoor traps built into them. Yes, let's take a look at this um, um, poster here. Can you get, any, get up there? Why don't we take a look at this, uh, this face, turn it around here. What do you suppose is wrong with Bill Casey? Why, why, would, why would he be what he is? Why would he want to, uh, why would he want the American public to, be, to everything that we believe to be false? What, what is wrong with him? And what is wrong with uh, all of the other um, bullshit merchants uh, out there? And uh, petty tyrant, tyrant, that correct, talked about uh, these people, uh, or uh, at least some of them, as being para homo sapiens. They're not really human. They're not really uh, physically human. But I know that a lot of the, uh, or most perhaps, of the people who are doing this stuff are probably uh, physiologically homo sapiens, but they're acting like they're not homo sapiens. They're not acting like they're, or they're behaving without uh, empathy and uh, without ethics, and certainly um, they, they're addicted to the lie. Well, you know, we also see that reality, though, in the corporate structure, right. because the corporate structure is void of recognizing life. And so we have a machine that has been built uh, by those in power, uh, whoever you want and however you want to consider the identity of those in power. Uh, I like to think of it as far as the banking system and the, uh, the families that have all the wealth on the face of the planet. There are many other um, uh, you know, aspects to identifying that. But we know that we have people that are psychopaths and sociopaths that are at the helm of our ship, our spaceship Earth. And they're, they're, we're headed into the rocks because, again, uh, they do believe now that they have the ability to live forever. And they believe that they can do away with humans and uh, literally turn us into cyborgs, which is what they're working on now. This is why we have poisonous food supplies. This is why we have poison and neurotoxins in the water supply and chemtrailing. This is why we're getting GMO, despite our opposition to all of these things. These things are legal. Now think about that. These things are legal. All the poisons and toxins are legal. Why? Because we have a corporate structure. Well, they're not really legal in terms of the uh, Constitution. They're legal in terms of these statutes, right, well, to, to, that are designed to destroy it. Well, we don't have a constitution now. Right. We were told in 1933 in the United States, as long as we remain in a perpetual state of national emergency, the constitution has been put aside. Now, I know there are many people that uh, still believe that we can resurrect the constitution. Um, I would like to, of course, see that for my grandchildren and everyone. Uh, but sadly, the structure is not there. There's no framework for the Constitution to rest upon at this point because when you look at the facts, we don't have state or federal governments. We don't have a, a, a judiciary system that serves us. They serve the corporate structure. It's been methodically, incrementally designed to imprison us so we're at a point right now where we simply cannot consent. There's, I don't see any other way around the dilemma that we all face and the reality that we're really living in other than to not consent. And that means to not consent to the corporate statutes. That's what this means. So we have uh, many recommendations. There have been hundreds 
of people across the United States that have been working on uh, ways in which you cannot consent. It doesn't mean that you become belligerent. It doesn't mean that you have to go outside of your comfort, comfort zone to ask a corporate um, employee to fill out these forms. But the forms are basically about showing you that you've agreed to these corporate statutes. You want to see your wet ink signature that you've agreed because you cannot be held responsible for policies that, first of all, you know nothing about, and second of all, you never agreed to. And I would like to think it's as simple as what you're hearing me say, but we've got to stop consenting to a corporate structure. We have got uh, people in, in town councils, in county board of supervisors, that don't understand the, the structure that they're in. They don't realize that they're working for a corporation when their cities and towns are incorporated. They somehow or another think that they're incorporated so that they can have liability benefit, uh, tax write-off benefit. They don't realize that they're incorporated to do business. And they're doing business by creating increased revenue on all of us. And that's what's happening. So I look at this monster out of control. I look at the mind control. I look at all of the levels, as Kennedy warned us. What's behind the corporate structure? What's controlling the corporate structure? Well, of course, we can look at how it was stealthily put into place when we look at the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document. Uh, they talk about um, the bankers. There are many levels of this conversation, as you're well aware of, Dr. Ed. And I would rather keep people to the reality that we have paperwork in our cities right now that you can go. You can go online. You can go to your building department or your planning department. You can get copies of these climate action plans or these sustainability plans. We have enough of, I, I, th I see, enough of a problem in just getting people to understand that level of reality. That's why we have different links on StopTheCrime.net for different levels of opportunity for people that have already assimilated the documentation, such as reading the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document, the report from Iron Mountain, uh, taking a look at the other source documents we have on the source document page, and then getting in to the levels of mind control. Now, I want to say, Dr. Ed, um, we have spent quite a bit of time recently interviewing uh, runners that are running from the chips and the tracking and the torture that they're being subjected to on a daily basis uh, by um, ground teams. Once these people are located as a result of their chips, then uh, ground teams come in, and they use cell phones Literally, our bodies, their bodies have been turned into a cell phone where these chips uh, can be called by a cell phone. And they experience horrific pain, headaches, gut-wrenching nausea. They can be dropped to the ground. They can wake up a few hours later on a bed and having had been sexually assaulted, for example. So these, uh, these gang-stalking teams are basically... Uh psychopaths running around uh, using a, a very advanced technology. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't that be what it is? Well, I, I'm understanding that there's lots of people that want to make a buck and that they can be college students, they can be a sheriff and police, uh, military, all levels, um, white supremacists, etc. And many of them are told that that person has done something and uh, that has caused the assaults upon them. Uh, many people are getting drugs as payment for stalking. A lot of people, yes, are sociopaths and psychopaths, and they love to torture people. Well, you know, how did they get that way? How did a society that was functioning pretty well, you know, uh, leave it to Beaver or whatever, the popsicle index of uh, Catherine Austin Fitz, how did we deteriorate so far, so fast? Well, we have, we have as a uh, former um, CIA director mm -hmm. told us, we have a level of evil amongst our, our 
in our midst that we, we can't see. We don't understand it. But it is safe. We know that children are abducted uh, and uh, murdered uh, as a result of being sacrificed for these uh, ritual. There's another aspect of the, of the mind control. Remember the Sandy Hook thing in which um, apparently nobody was killed. Uh, there was a big show with people walking around and paramedics and the, uh, the coroner said he was leaving the bodies there overnight. I mean, can you imagine how people would struggle to save a classroom of children and, and, and you know, real, real paramedics, real people, and they wouldn't just, you know, walk around and uh, they wouldn't leave the bodies there overnight. And, uh, and then that a lot of, um, I guess, a lot of uh, real estate had changed hands at a zero um, price uh, before this. So it looked like an entire community had somehow been uh, horribly turned and contaminated. And uh, I have to think that probably the electronic mind control may have had something to do with that. And that uh, the electronic mind control is uh, functioning uh, at various levels uh, on everyone. I mean, would you, th do you think that there's any chance that, let's say, uh, the highest level, the president, the cabinet, all kinds of people like that are uh, exempt from um, electronic mind control? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, I think that most of the power brokers globally are already under massive mind control. Um, certainly people that are in a level of authority would be directly assaulted. In fact, I know that people have done an antenna search of uh, Washington, D.C., and they're heavily infiltrated with microwaves. Uh, that, that has been observed. In fact, back even in the 70s, there was concern with all the dogs and all the police that were constantly around the Capitol when um, uh, Congress was in session, et cetera. And people were feeling nervous and scared even back then. And we know that the Russians directed energy weapons on Medford, Oregon in the early 70s and caused, uh, within about a 48-hour period of time, 24 um, suicides. Uh, they were mm. testing the degree of the influence of frequencies on our brains. So absolutely, when we look at Sandy Hook, another interesting thing is Sandy Hook is con was and is considered a transition town transition town. You can type in and see if your city is considered a transition town. I know that here, Ed, in uh, Northern California, there are a number of cities that are transition towns. Well, they tell us that transition means that we're prepared to come out of any type of emotional or weather type of chaos. And so really what they're doing is they're they, they've got us in this matrix, this, this um, virtual reality, where they're pounding us with weaponized weather, they're um, using um, weaponized insects and bugs. We recently found out here in Northern California that there's a mosquito that has uh, been identified to be a carrier of yellow fever and dengue fever. And there's no antidote, there's no poisonous pharmaceutical toxin that can help you out of the weaponized uh, bite of this, um, of this mosquito. But uh, I found it interesting because in some of the recent meetings that we've been attending about the water shortage and the idea that we have to uh, catch it, uh, stop it, catch it, and sink it. I think I got that right. In other words, when it rains, we have to contain the water. They want us to have divots in our property, et cetera. And yet the, um, the vector control is saying don't store water on your property. These, uh, these uh, mosquitoes have been identified in our area. And they will cause um, uh, arthritic conditions, sleeplessness, and possible capillary bleed out and people will die, depending on the level of your immune system. Well, who's doing this? Why are they doing it? 
what what is the motivation here? They're reducing the population, and they're having fun, and they're enjoying it. Well, um, so um, the people who put on smart meters and enjoy it, doing it? I think that they have a level of, of um, employees that are unaware. They're compartmentalized. Mm. They really are unaware uh, what the meters are doing. And they're being told that people that oppose these things are nut jobs. Well, and compartmentalization is a big thing. And, of course, it's not limited to blue-collar people, but it's probably most prominent and uh, destructive in uh, universities and uh, government and uh, what, what's passing for government in the, in the, the uh, intellectual spheres where um, people are incredibly isolated and uh, uh, censor themselves or, or, or are censored um, intensely. So um, it's just not somebody installing a, a smart meter. It's um, the uh, allegedly upper levels that are um, incredibly uh, isolated. Well, um, that's, that's absolutely true. Um, and it's, uh, it's a maze. And that's why we have so many links on StopTheCrime.net for people to research uh, the documentation that we have. We encourage everyone to uh, get the word out. I know that many people are putting uh, magnet signs on their vehicles to get the information out. We're the media. This is it. This is it. You've got to spread this information far and wide. Get it out as far as you possibly can. Uh, go to the source documents that you've heard us speak about. Confirm this for yourselves. I can tell you initially I did not know what I did not know. And I can say that every single day uh, we seem to be plummeting further in to this insanity. And it certainly has seemed to speed up. I don't know if it's because more and more people are becoming aware, but please, I would urge everyone go to StopTheCrime.net and become informed and educated. You to vote on the news, and here's the winner. There's a huge, hidden, heavenly body right here in our solar system. Evidence is mounting that either a brown dwarf star or a gas giant planet is lurking at the outermost reaches of our solar system, far beyond the planet Pluto. According to the British newspaper, The Independent, the object is four times the size of Jupiter. Experts say the presence of such a massive object could explain why a barrage of comets has been coming from that direction. We'll post Hi, my name is David Morrison. I'm a NASA space scientist, and I want to talk to you very briefly about Nibiru. I'm doing this because I received a note from a 12-year-old girl recently that said she wondered if the video I made two years ago was still valid, that she and her classmates were scared about Nibiru, and could I please explain, from a science point of view, why we know Nibiru is not real and is not a danger. You know, the, the simplest thing to say is just that there is no credible evidence whatever for the existence of Nibiru. Uh, there are no pictures, there's no tracking, there's no astronomical observations. Are we being primed, Gordon, for some major announcement? Well, that's the thing is, now, the Zeta say that the Council of Worlds has told the president, you've got to announce it. I say... Uh, and, uh, you know, everyone I tell that to goes, well, I'll eat my hat if the president ever announced that. But if, if he did, you know, you can speculate that the first thing he would say is Ronald Reagan had an executive order that this is top secret. And every other president signed on. But now I'm going to be the one who's uh, breaking that because everybody has to know. And, and what would he, well, we're coming up to the break. When we come back, yeah. speculate on what you think he would say, Okay. With our special guest, James, Gordon James Gianni Noto. And we're talking about Planet X. Now, he has uh, sent us some interesting pictures that you should get up to coasttocoastam.com and just take a look at them and uh, make up your own mind. And I'll be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. If you need to email me, 
That's George at coasttocoastam.com. Well, next hour, we'll take your phone calls with Gordon James Gianni Noto as we talk about Planet X. And welcome back to Coast to Coast with Gordon James Gianni Noto. Gordon, let's speculate a little bit on if there's an announcement of this planet. How will it be announced? Well, um, the. There's two lines of thought. One is from the Zetas that the Council of Worlds has told the president that he has to announce it. The other is my line of thought, which is that how can he not announce it? Because as Planet X comes closer and closer to the Earth, eventually it's going to come very close. It's going to be as large as the full moon, and it's going to grab the Great Atlantic Rift and pull it up. And people don't realize that the, the continents are granite, and they float on the magma core. So they're just... They're just floating there. So the Great Atlantic Rift is a line of mountains right down the center of the Atlantic Ocean from Iceland to Antarctic, and, it's, and it's, there's an upwelling of magma right there. And as the North Pole of Planet X is in line with the sun, um, as Planet X is in line with the sun and the North Pole is pointed at the Earth, um, it's, it's every day when the Atlantic Ocean, Ocean faces the sun, um, the, the Atlantic Rift gets pulled down towards planet X, and then as the Earth continues to turn, it gets released because when the North Pole of Earth starts going towards the North Pole of planet X, then it gets pushed back. But um, So eventually what's going to happen is planet X is going to grab the crust. It's going to be close enough that the crust will stop turning with the core. So nothing changes the core, and nothing changes the North Pole of Earth pointing up. But what's going to happen is Planet X is trying to go by, and the day it goes by, it's going to grab the crust and slide it up over the North Pole and then let go of it. And when it lets go of it, the new North Pole is going to be the eastern tip of Brazil, Recife, Brazil. And there's going to be 600-foot tidal waves followed by the tail of Planet X brushing the Earth with all these rocks, which was one of them was um, the... Um, the um, uh, meteor over over, over meteor Russia. Right over Russia. So you're talking catastrophe here. Absolute catastrophe. But the thing is, is that after that, with no governments and no religions and no uh, economy, the unselfish ETs are going to come and give unspecified help to unselfish survival communities. So, uh, you know, because people say, well, all the nuclear reactors are all on fault all over the world. But you know, they could transmute the half-life of plutonium from, from 125,000 years to 1.25 seconds. So, um, but they haven't said what they're going to do because we're supposed to be taking some responsibility for ourselves. So, What's the timetable on this? Well, see, that's the thing. There isn't a timetable, and that's, that's the number one question everyone asks. Well, when is this going to happen? But the thing is, is it could happen at any time. The only country that's taken any provision is China, which has built these ghost cities. Because um, remember, I had said that the is southeastern uh, China plate was going to be sinking. Well, Jakarta, Indonesia, parts of it are 85 feet below sea level. Um, that that sinking is is almost 70 uh, percent complete in that tip of the Southeast Asian plate. But all the other um, the earth changes have stopped, and I was I was talking to Nancy on the phone. And I I said you know that I heard that that these metal boxes were found on the beaches in Oregon, and they were vibrating. And I said I think there's extraterrestrial devices. And Nancy started saying, No, I've told you before, there's no extraterrestrial devices on Earth. And all of a sudden, the Zetas broke through Nancy, and speaking through her to me, um, they said this is absolutely true. And she later wrote about this, and this was, um, you, you remember, uh, people have said, well, there weren't any boxes or it was a hoax or whatever, but it is true. On all the faults of the earth, there are th tens of thousands of these boxes vibrating, and what they're doing is instead of letting the, the movement of the plates, because the roiling of the magma deep in the core of the earth is causing these quakes and these other shifts, the north end of South America is going to move to the west. The north end of Africa is going to move to the east. The Atlantic is going to get wider. The Pacific is going to get narrower. So there's all these things. And, and uh, the Zetas had said there was an event calendar, and seven was preliminary earth changes. Eight was massive social change, and nine was worldwide volcanoes, earthquakes, and sinkings. And uh, so anyway, these metal boxes have put that off, and the reason why is because 
they want to have the massive social change. And you can imagine if the president does announce it, of course there's going to be massive social change. Well, if it's going to happen, if it's going to happen, will he announce it? I, to me, it sounds like he's compelled to. Well, that's that's my thinking is because when when everybody, when it finally gets separates from the sun far enough that you can see it with your naked eye. Now, I, I've said I've gone out, my wife has gone out, I've got hundreds of pictures of two suns in the sky that I took myself. Now, if I can do that, then anyone can do that. And... Um, you know, so there it is. There's this bright glowing area. You're not looking at Planet X itself because it's in between the Earth and the Sun. So it's like trying to photograph the uh, the new moon. You just can't do it. Um, but it's got a 5 million mile long or 10 million mile long. It's really, you know, it's a long tail, twin stranded, stretching towards the Earth because of static electricity. So Planet X is not going anywhere. It's sitting there. And the, the clump of four planets, the dark twin, Venus, the Earth, and, the, and planet X are still rotating around the sun, but, but they're not moving in relation to each other. And the tail is stretched towards the Earth, so that rock that came down over Russia and the other ones that were seen over San Francisco and Cuba and Japan are all from the tail of planet rocks, and there's trillions of them. So this is going to be a big disaster. So when the president announces it, um, you know, and I mean, I, I'm not sitting in his office uh, privy to whatever they're deciding, but I can tell you this. Um, they really don't want people to, to he, he's not going to use the word Planet X because that's the term that the Zetas have used and that is on Zeta Talk is Planet X. That's panic time, right? So they don't want people to run to Google, do a search, and go, oh, look. There's a woman in Wisconsin who's been in telepathic contact with extraterrestrials because that reveals two things. We're about to have giant disasters, and second of all, there are extraterrestrials who have been telling the truth since 1995. So they don't want to do that. So it's interesting that they started talking about it as Nibiru. So um, I, I was talking to Nancy, and she's, she's starting to, every time she says Planet X, she goes, a.k.a. Nibiru or Dash Nibiru or Slash Nibiru, so that if anybody does a Google search on Nibiru, they're still going to come up with Zeta Talk. So he's, he's going to say, look, um, Reagan signed an executive order making it top secret. Every president signed on, but I'm such a humanitarian that I'm telling you that there has been a planet between the Earth and the Sun for nine years, and, uh, and, and, and why not? I mean, if it separates from the sun where every single person on Earth looks up and goes, oh, my God, what's that? And the glowing area, the thing that's at the 5 o'clock position is the tail, which is sort of transparent, translucent, whatever you want to say, because it's a cloud of dust or red iron oxide dust. It's lit by the sun, and you can see that from Earth. So that, that's what people are taking pictures of, is the tail of planet X stretching towards the Earth. And you can't see Planet X itself, but at one of these days, when it gets far enough from the sun, you are going to see it. And then at that day, George, don't you think everyone's going to go, the government couldn't tell us there's a planet? Sure, it, absolutely. No, and they're no. never going to believe another word the government ever says again for no, any reason. Not at all. So, all right, 6.8 billion people, Gordon, on the planet. How many people may perish? Probably 60% are going to die exactly at the moment of pole shift. And another... Now, the 30% are going to die from disease and starvation and shock. I mean, what the president should be announcing and saying, listen, you've, we've got to move away from the coastlines. I mean, imagine what a 600 well, And what's the timetable? Okay. Well, that's the thing is, like, there isn't a timetable. There's an event timetable. But the president has been trying to announce it since last September. So uh, first they tried with the emergency broadcast system. That, and, that, uh, that was all screwed that up. Didn't, that didn't work. And then, believe it or not, I mean, you know, you think if you're president, you can just announce whatever the hell you want. And no, you can't, because there are people, the elite and the rich and the powerful, don't want you to stop going to your job. I mean, if they announced the, tr the whole truth, do you think anyone would show up for their job? Pilots, policemen, firemen? Um, truck no, drivers. people would want to be with their friends and family. Right, and they'd all head for Wyoming and Montana and places like that, you know, as far away from the coast as they can. The safe havens. Right, and so you can figure out where. Now, I live on a mountaintop in the middle of the Maine coast because Maine was held down by glaciers. And once, 
and it's slowly rising. So once the crust comes free of the core, it's just going to pop up another 500 feet. So I'll be doing fine with a 600-foot tidal wave. But um, Florida, that's actually going to sink. The U.K., that's going to sink. Japan is going to sink. So a, a lot of places, it isn't just a matter of a 600-foot tidal wave. And then, of course, all the ice in the whole world is in the wrong place, so that's going to melt. So the, the Zetas say the final sea level is going to be 700 feet above present. So the president isn't going to say what's going to happen. He's, go, he's going to say, um, there's a planet in between the Earth and the Sun, and now I, this is what I think, and, you know, speculation, because, um, you know, I'm not privy to the script here, but, um, but uh, you know, that he would turn it over to NASA, which would say, yes, there's a rogue planet, but we were prohibited by national security, but don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. If anything's going to happen, we'll tell you. And then maybe they turn it over to NOAA, which is saying, well, this huge earth wobble is what's causing all this weather. They're never going to admit that um, that uh, uh, um, global warming and climate change were a lie because can you imagine the lawsuits? It would bring the whole world to a halt because how many hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent on uh, getting, uh, reducing car fossil fuels? And, you know, the thing is, is Planet X is roiling the magma, so the magma is circulating closer to the bottom of the crust, so the seafloors are warming. And... The ice is melting from underneath, but the actual truth is the Arctic just had one of the coldest winters in years, and the amount of ice that formed this winter in the Arctic is unbelievable. Antarctica has been gaining ice. The top of the Himalayas and a lot of these glaciers are gaining ice. So this whole global warming thing, they're never going to use that phrase again. They would rather die than say global warming. So, um, you know, I don't know how he's going to put it, but my opinion is um, – He's got to announce it. And meanwhile, the government is doing all these strange things, like ordering 1.2 billion rounds of hollow point ammunition. They're going to arm these uh, Social Security um, uh, employees, and the National Weather Service employees are all going to be packing with hollow point bullets. I mean, come on. Who, who, who thinks, um, you know, that that's normal? What are they expecting? And... You know, of course, there's going to be some people who are going to uh, uh, riot and, and uh, steal and loot and uh, God knows well, what. Well, things, things could be out of control. Right. They could be out of control. But yet, if they do announce it, then people will go, well, this is something that we're all facing together. Let's work together to save as many people as possible. But they've got to do it sooner than later. Now, I live on a mountaintop. I heat with wood. I've got an outhouse. I'm ready for no electricity and no fuel. Um, you know, I live in a forest. I've got wood all around me. So, you know, my theory is if you're ready for pole shift today, then you're going to be ready for it whenever else you can. But if you, if you notice, around the world, the economy has not been getting better, regardless of what they're saying. And people are realizing every day that everything they've worked for all their lives is coming to naught. And hopefully people will say, well, really, what is important, and they'll realize, you know, you, every time you see a disaster, you see people say, well, I lost everything, but, you know, at least we all survived. And, you know, that's what's important, and people are going to start realizing, well, maybe people are more important than possession. But this earth wobble, I mean, I went out last July to take a picture of the full moon rising over the mountain in Maine where I live. And... um and when I was in elementary school, we had a target range in the basement. So when I was in the third grade, we had lockers all the way down the hallway, and every guy, every guy in the third grade had his own twenty two caliber rifle in an unlocked locker in the hallway, and we all had bullets in our pocket, and we couldn't wait till 3 o'clock to get out. That wouldn't target. happen anymore. <laughs> no, no, and I grew up in the town Jeez. next to Sandy Hook. So, um, you know, but there are there are people who've decided to be selfish and doing awful things. But the majority of everybody is, is uh, you know, very conscientious. I mean, Maine is second in the nation for guns per person and 49th in gun-related deaths per person. So, you know, just because, you know, so people are legitimately saying, well, wow, I, I got a feeling something's not right. And you see that show, Doomsday Preppers. Oh, sure, yeah. People are like, well, you know, the economy isn't coming back. I mean, I was in Walmart the other day. They had 15 people in a five-acre store. 
And I said to the cashier, I said, you can't even be paying your overhead with this. And she goes, oh, no, the economy is going to be coming back. Well, okay, fine. You know, that, now they've been hit hard. That's what you say. But um, So I was out there taking pictures of the full moon, and, and I guess probably I learned to have a steady uh, stance with my hands and a camera at an early age. Um, and, uh, you know, I used to win um, NRA uh, sharpshooter awards. And that wasn't, you know, starting in the third grade. I mean, so anyway, I shot two pictures, and the mosquitoes were biting me like crazy. So I wanted to get a good picture of the full moon. And um, so I shot a whole series of pictures, and then I ran inside to get out away from the mosquitoes. And when I was playing them back on my computer, I realized that in two consecutive pictures, I hadn't moved my hands at all. There's, there's a table up on top of the mountain. And there's the full moon. And in the second picture, the moon is moved to the right, not up. Now, if you think about it, everything, the moon, the stars, the sun, all rise in the east, go up to the midheaven, and then set in the west. And here I got two pictures of the moon, and between the two pictures, the moon moves sideways. How'd that happen? Well, that was like, you know, I think the ETs, like I said, I've been in contact with ETs my whole life. And... Um, I think they guided me to do that because that is one of the most remarkable pictures. Now, I've, I've gone out and watched Sirius rising and Orion rising in the east, and then I go back 20 minutes later, and all of a sudden it's like 45 degrees further south, but it isn't any higher in the sky. Now, why would that be? That's because every single day, Planet X pulls the magnetic bar of the Great Atlantic Rift down towards it, and then as the Earth continues to shift and the Atlantic no longer faces the sun, then the North Pole, which doesn't like the North Pole of Planet X, um, pushes the Earth, the North Pole of the Earth back. So you get these wobbles, and what you get is this gigantic loops in the jet stream. So normally the jet stream moves from west to east, but now if you notice these weather maps, you know, and, and why wouldn't you with all these big storms? So everybody's more interested in the weather than ever because it really can be life or death. And what you get is these giant arcs of cold air coming down from the Arctic. And 30 miles to the east, you've got this giant arc of tropical air coming up from the Caribbean. Um, and you've got this clash of fronts that makes these gigantic storms. I mean, look at Hurricane Sandy. And, you know, if the government told the truth, they should say nobody should rebuild anywhere. But it's just like Katrina and New Orleans. People are saying, well... You know, we, we're going to bring it back, and it's going to be so meaningful, and we're going to have uh, Seaside Heights, New Jersey, ready for the tourist season. And You know, but the truth is nobody should be there now at all because this is right in the danger zone. They, you know, they should be saying, well, we're going to move anyone that wants to go from the coast. And that's the interesting thing. The Zetas have said even when this is announced, probably only – as much as 60%, but no more than that, are going to go, oh, my God, we've got to, to go to safety. And the rest are going to go, well, you know, I really don't want to change anything, so I'm going to keep going to work, and if a tidal wave uh, washes over me, then, then that's it. You know, I'll just die. Well, you know, okay, you're that's what this life is like. You're entitled to be a skeptic. You're entitled to be in denial, and you're entitled to die, in it, but there's no reason for you to do that. Hold on for a second, Gordon. We're coming back for phone calls with you next on Coast to Coast AM. Indeed, indeed, and we're going to take your phone calls when we come right back on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. Gordon, are you saying then in our solar system we've got a dark twin to Earth, we've got a burned-out binary star, and we have Planet X? No, the binary star is uh, quite a distance away. Uh, that's why it takes 3,657 years for Planet X to return. So it's something we've never seen because it's burned out, but it is a huge body, and that's where it started. And Evidently, Planet X has been coming here at least 2 billion years. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't that the Anunnaki were always there. They reached a point where they decided they wanted to powder the gold and put it in their atmosphere to keep the planet a little bit warmer. It's got giant um, hot magma in its core, and it's got water, which has the highest specific heat of any substance in the universe, so it holds heat 
it takes longer to heat water than anything in the universe, and it, and heat and water holds heat longer than any. So, but they were getting cold, so that that's what that's where the whole quest for gold came from, is from that. And Richard Hoagland has said that, uh, and he's a guest on your show quite a, often. Quite, quite a bit. Um, he said that Phobos is a spaceship because it's it's a hollowed out and it's got chambers in it because they use ground penetrating radar. But actually, the, uh, Phobos is one giant gold nugget, and the Anunnaki, since they came back, have been mining it with robots. That's got to be worth something. Oh my God! So huh. uh, you know, but you know, if you if anybody thinks I'm making this stuff up, I mean, look at go do a search in Wyoming. Dick Cheney tried to get the Wyoming legislature, and he only failed by a few votes, to buy a used aircraft carrier. Now, what in the hell would Wyoming use? There's no water there, is there? Well, that's the thing. Is, uh, <laughs> you know, Edgar Casey said that Omaha was going to be the greatest seaport in North America after pole shift. And, uh, you know, evidently he's planning that the Mississippi will split wide or salt water will go up to the Great Lakes and then... Uh, up the uh, Missouri and the Platte Rivers, and then maybe the Red River. And I guess they were planning to, uh, you know, keep it, um, I don't know, in the Great Lakes or in uh, the Gulf and then fl float it right up to Wyoming. But you can see why he would want that. It's got nuclear power. It's got a hospital that holds 5,000 people, and he could load it with uh, strike, uh, fighter strike jets, you know, and be king of the world. And you look at the billionaires around the Earth that they're, they're trying to uh, start their own space programs, but the Council of Worlds has said, no, nobody's going to leave Earth and come back as kings of the Earth afterwards. No, they're all going to have to go through it, and whether you're a billionaire or not, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves. So, the, you know, they, you've heard of the idea of these deep underground bunkers everybody was going to head to. Yeah. But, um, you know, how how well are they going to survive in 10-plus in power earthquakes? So they're not. And but then you know after pole shift at the mo at the hour of pole shift, when the tidal waves start, then everyone's going to after that there won't be any earthquakes, so people are going to want to be underground because how are you going to survive this fall of rocks? Okay, let's go to the phones. You to vote on the news, and here's the winner. There's a huge hidden heavenly body right here in our solar system. Evidence is mounting that either a brown dwarf star or a gas giant planet is lurking at the outermost reaches of our solar system, far beyond the planet Pluto. According to the British newspaper, The Independent, the object is four times the size of Jupiter. Experts say the presence of such a massive object could explain why a barrage of comets has been coming from that direction. We'll post Planet X is a very controversial subject, but when we study it, we find that it may hold answers to some of life's most perplexing questions. Everything from evolution, to how we came about as a species, to current Earth changes and what might lie ahead for us in the future. My name is Robert Sepper, and this video is my attempt to explain some of these mysteries. To understand everything thoroughly, we must start from our past. as you do research on our mitochondrial DNA, you find that it goes back into the range of 150,000 years based on the mitochondrial DNA, which is, I think, pretty much incontrovertible. If we're 150 to 200,000 years old, that throws a huge, gigantic wrench into the establishment position that we evolved from creatures that were walking upright approximately four million years ago. The early Australopithecines, Lucy, everyone is familiar with her at around 3.2 to 3.5 million years ago, and they're finding new ones all the time. And all they say is to qualify as human is to be upright walking. If you're an upright walking pre-creature, you know, pre -creature, you're called a pre-human. Even though all of those creatures right through Neanderthal from from Lucy at four million years ago right through the Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthal to Cro-Magnon right up to Cro-Magnon all of those creatures don't look anything like human beings as we are today. They, they are as different from us as primates. In fact they look like primates. 
they look like upright walking primates. Up through Neanderthal, back to Lucy, and whatever's going to come before her. What could make something change so radically, literally overnight, in anthropological terms, and be anything remotely associated with Darwinism? I believe, personally, that the writings of the Sumerians 4,000 years ago, as chronicled by Zechariah Sitchin in his books, The Earth Chronicles, I believe that is the most logical and reasonable explanation that there is for how we came to be. Twenty some odd years ago, Zechariah Sitchin wrote The Twelfth Planet. In The Twelfth Planet, he describes ancient writings and texts by the Sumerians depicting a 3,600-year orbit of Nibiru. But the Sumerians are rarely spoken about in history books. Who were the Sumerians? And what could an ancient civilization possibly know about how we came to be? We only hear about like the Egyptians or the Mayans or the Incans, Romans, Greeks. The first culture we have on Earth were the Sumerians. And they showed up 6,000 years ago where modern day Iraq is. It's right between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. It was then known as Mesopotamia, Babylon, but also Sumeria, where the first culture on Earth stems. And they have left us over 100 of the, of the first for high society to take place. For instance, stemming from Sumeria 6,000 years ago, they were the first ones to invent writing. They had a system of over 400 characters, known, known as cuneiform text, then use a wedge-shaped stylus or an object with a wedge and would twist and turn and make all these characters that came up to about 400 characters and they had their own complete language like an alphabet that we use today A through Z but this stemmed out of Sumeria 6,000 years ago and all of the first for high society come from them time, the calendar, math, schools, courts, judges, systems of law all of this origina originated in Sumeria which was then known as uh, Mesopotamia, Babylon, today's modern-day Iraq. The Sumerians are actually probably the most influential culture of the ancient world. Not the Egyptians, not the Greeks, not the Romans, the Sumerians. The Sumerians invented, for example, the zodiac. All of the, the symbols that we still have today for the zodiac were created by the Sumerians. They tell an incredible story the Sumerians do of the Anunnaki, which is that there is another planet in our solar system, that gods, super beings, live on this planet, that these beings come to Earth. The Sumerians had a pantheon of gods, but it was living gods. They were the, the, the Sumerians worshipped living gods who lived and worked and, and, and had their lives among them. They were the Anunnaki. Among those Anunnaki, there were 12 leaders, 12 super gods, the bosses, the boss of bosses. Those 12 gods come down and are present in the Egyptian culture, in the Greek culture, and in the Roman culture. They just have different names, but they have basically the same personalities and the same functions. So it, it isn't that mythology begins with the Egyptians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Mythology begins with the Sumerians. Monotheism didn't kick in until the gods, the multiple gods, actually physically left. When we look at all the stories in the Bible about how uh, God is a feared God and you know if you do what God tells you, you, you are uh, given the, the reprisal of going to heaven, or if you do wrong, you, you go to hell, you know, and it's very black and white. But the Sumerians give us a lot more context into that line of thinking and how it came about in their image and after their likeness. The Anunnaki quoted to the Sumerians as saying, we have created you in our image and after our likeness, and we were their slaves, basically, to do uh, as they bid it, you know, uh, mine, mine the gold, uh, do their daily chores. Uh, and we were basically their slaves. The leader said, we'll make you a slave. We'll make you a servant. And that's the reason, the impetus, according again to the Sumerian writings, for the creation of human beings. The story of Noah is a classic that comes right out of the Sumerian texts. The word Eden, 
the Anunnaki called the land where they lived the Eden. Eden. Um, the Adam, they called the, the uh, worker slave that they created, the Adamu, plural. Could the Anunnaki have genetically engineered humans? It sounds incredible until we consider that we ourselves genetically engineer the fruit and vegetables we eat every day. From tomatoes to apples and oranges to cloning Dolly the sheep. If we can genetically manipulate DNA, then who's to say that we weren't created or our DNA wasn't tampered with by another race of beings in the past? Now the question is, were we? Did they? And if we were, there must be some empirical evidence, some clues left behind besides writing in a text that points to this. If you look at the human genome, you'll see that it looks very much like a primate genome, except the second and third chromosomes are fused into one. So what does that, what does that solve? It gives you all the chromosomal material of the primate but it's now only taking up the space in, in, the, in the combining process of 46. It is 46 chromosomes with 48 chromosomes of genomic material still in there. Now, how could nature do that? How could nature fuse those two chromosomes together in any length of time? It, it wouldn't happen. It couldn't happen. That was done. According to Sitchin, we were created genetically by the Anunnaki as a worker to mine gold for them, to serve them. People out there, even if you're not a scholar, even if you're not anything, if you open your eyes a little bit to this and you start just doing your own research, you're going to find paths there that lead you to some things that are going to awaken new ideas into you. And the next few years, I think we're going to see a watershed of information uh, that is going to absolutely rewrite every book of history. There is evidence left over this entire planet when you start thinking and you must believe that we are the offspring of these people. If there was a God, the God created those people before they created us. We are here because of an act of divine creation, but they were people just like us only older, only more technically advanced. We need to rediscover that in ourselves, that we are a great civilization. We came from a great civilization. And I would tell anybody to, to look, open your eyes and look for it. Don't be blinded to something that's uh, uh, led to nothing but uh, the slaughter of ourselves for thousands of years. And we still are at that point. We're still a war in society. When this documentary or others like it uh, are put out there and enough people will see it, at least that will start a beacon somewhere that will start shining a little bit brighter. And so at some point, we're going to see that we have a different history than what we've been given. The proof's there. Our true history may be indeed very different than what we've been taught through the ages. Whether this data has been withheld or our identities have just been forgotten, it is our responsibility now to rediscover who we are and where we're going.